welcome to the world of finance. We all want to invest wisely and see our money grow. And that's where a financial planner or advisor steps in. If you understand the current regulations, what has happened in last year on October, this financial advisor regulation, which was we were waiting for last 10 years, has finally come in. Now they, that person has to clearly tell whether he's an advisor or a distributor. And in case of an advisor, he needs to have certain amount of qualification to be called an advisor and he needs to carry a license to give advice. And one of the components of that is financial planning regulations and, and CFP is, a, is a, like the topmost uh, you know, icon for that. Crunch, analyze, process numbers you may, but if you're looking at a career in financial planning and want people to take your proficiency with money matters any more seriously, you should look at acquiring a CFP certification awarded by FPSB. The CFP mark is a global certification which uh, kind of certifies that this individual has gone through a process of extensive education, examination, is bound by a certain system of ethics and is a professional in the retail finance space who puts the interest of the consumers before his own. There are various ways to get the certification if financial planning is your calling. There are two ways in which a student can become a CFP, a Certified Financial Planner. One is through the education route. You can uh, enroll with an education provider. There are 40 of them with 150 centers across the country. And they will have courseware, they will have classes and you, uh, you know, enroll in that, you pay whatever it takes and you go through a series of five examinations. So you have to clear five fairly tough uh, papers to become a CFP certificate. Goes without saying that a CFP is not an easy certification to earn. Intensive study is needed before the certification can be yours. Modules in CFP which includes uh, introduction to financial planning which is about basic simple mathematics about <coughs> finance because as you talk about finance number crunching is one of the first things that comes to the mind then coming on to uh, risk analysis and insurance planning and insurance is an in integral part while we are managing the client's portfolio we need to tell them educate them how they can plan their finances better and manage their risk and then moving on to investment planning moving on to retirement planning talking about the taxation in the client's portfolios and then finally moving on to the advanced financial planning which is actually incubation of a lot of case studies of real-time nature and complexity about the client. So we include all those six modules. But what if you are already working in the industry and want to take up an advisory role or want to add to your impressive list of certifications? There must be a quicker way to get the certification. There is something else called a challenge status where finance professionals, so you know there could be that there is a chartered accountant, uh, uh, F, a person who's done a CFA or simply a finance postgraduate who believe that this certification would help them in their work whether it is financial planning or simply doing, uh, you know, being a professional in the financial sector. For, their, for them there is a challenge status where they can fast track their process of becoming a certificate because they would have the three years experience. Skirting taxation, insurance, retirement and estate planning, a career in financial planning requires not just the understanding of various such fields but also requires one to be good with people. Two things, uh, some of the things which are really important including the trust that the financial planner commands from the client and secondly the technical competence both play a very important role because as we talk about managing somebody's money, it is, it is required that somebody can believe in you, in your advisory. So if you can prove that you have the ability to make money for and earn for your clients, they may never be a looking back. In New Delhi with camera person AJ Joseph and Abhishek Singh, Kriti Mathur for NDTV. Right, so what does it take to get into this course? We're going to get into that with our expert Mahesh Sharma in just a bit. But let's just hear from some students who are pursuing this course on what they find challenging and what is the most exciting thing about becoming a financial planner or at least studying to become one. We are International College of Financial Planning and we are joined by a bunch of students 
who is studying two different financial planning courses, Postgraduate Diploma in Financial Planning or PGDFP and MBA Financial Planning. Let's hear it from them. What is it that they're studying and what are their future plans? So, what are you studying? Yeah, hi, I'm studying MBAFP and it is a two-year integrated program uh, in which after first year we'll be given the diploma of the financial planning. Your reasoning behind going for uh, MBA and financial planning? Because I wanted to make a career in banking and BFSI industry which is banking and financial services industry and so uh, the de demand of the BFSI industry is the typical deep knowledge of finance and financial planning itself. What about you? Are you interested, really interested in earning a CFP eventually or you would rather start working? See, in the initial stage, I wasn't. Being from a business family, you know, studying was the last thing on our agenda. It was just, you know, how to expand your work and everything. Then uh, one day I had a talk with Mr. Bajaj and he, you know, briefed out the course to me and the details and stuff about it. So I was like, you know, may as well just give it a try. So I thought may as well, you know, do my PGDFP and MBA first. And alongside that, if it interests me, I'll do CFP along with that. So is it interesting you as of now? As of now, yes. Okay. I hope it does in the future as well, but as of now, the current modules which we guys have done, that does interest me. We also have someone with us who has cleared three modules of CFP certification. Let's hear it from him, how difficult was it or how easy it was for him. You have three modules cleared for CFP, so you have given your college exams. So, is there a lot of difference in the difficulty level or is there a level of difficulty? The college exams are easy. But the CFE level is very tough, which means that the numericals will not be strong, at least 60% of the paper. Have you cleared all the modules? I have investment planning, retirement planning and insurance planning. You want to have your own practice or you want to join a firm and work with them? Well, starting with my career, like eventually I'll obviously do the freelancing part. Work with a firm yeah. on some experience and then After, maybe... After, yes. Yeah, After but, that, I'll do freelancing. But the experts in the field suggest that you should not wait for a job. So, definitely, like uh, for now, I'm looking for the placements for that part only. Like uh, the companies have started com coming and we are appearing for the interviews and all. So, like for three, four years, I'll be, I'll work as an employer. I'll, I'll obviously learn as much as possible and uh, because that gives you a base. All of you in enjoy number crunching way too much and would rather just stick to financial planning than look at anything else. Best of luck to all of you Thank in you your so endeavor much. to earn a CFP certification. Thank you so much for talking Thank to you. us. Right, and as promised now, Mahesh with us to take all your queries. You've got several of them coming in. Mahesh, first, of course, this is a field that's sort of just about opening up. You know, like you were talking earlier that, you know, my investments in sort of post office schemes or fixed deposit were perhaps the only options I had earlier. Now, you know, you, wherever you look, whether it's, you know, magazines, TV, radio, etc., ads on mutual funds are everywhere. So the market's opening up. But as you're saying, slowly but surely. It still hasn't opened up. You know, we are still a very... Uh, saving nation which focuses on investments which are safe mm. but never beats inflation mm. so uh, it's invariably fixed deposits or uh, or at best postal national savings certificates that is where majority of India still saves mm. but with the inflation galloping at, at eight nine percent that won't work mm. so unless we we change the way we look at money and how fungible it is and where it can earn you the maximum returns, uh, you're not making it work for you. Right. And financial planning is the way to go. Mm. But India still hasn't opened up to financial planning. Mm. You know, we As in a third person who sort of comes in yes. and, and says, and this is, money. right, yes. looks at your money yes. and tells you how, Which is where how you to go. improve it. Right. Is, uh, you're not even open to it. Mm. So most planners even today are, are basically insurance agents. You know? mm. Insurance is the only investments we have in right. our mind. Right. And कुछ हो गया तो कुछ हो गया तो उतना ही है beyond that what is a mutual fund not more than half a percent of the country invest in mutual funds you know stock markets are 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 invest people in about four percent of the total savers have a certain investments in stock markets so our markets are very nascent when it comes to their potential so financial planning as a domain will will pick up as the economy also grows right. Right. Uh, like mutual funds were not heard of before uh, 1991, before mm -hmm. liberalization. There was only UTI. Now they're everywhere. Yeah. Right. Now they're everywhere. Right. At least they're visible. Right. And financial planning as a domain is exceptionally important because at each stage of your life, mm -hmm. your financial goals are different. Mm -hmm. Your needs are different. Right. So an expert comes in 
and tells you what is an ideal combination of saving products for you. Right, so you're saying in your 20s, 30s, 40s, so on and so forth, like your needs are changing. Yes. Perhaps as you grow older, you want to do more for your health or, yeah. you, you know, and Precisely. Like, right. You, you might have a house buying goal, you right. have a children's goal. Right. So it's almost like having a family doctor. Right, exactly. Right, so let's get started. Eshwarya has the first question. Go ahead, Eshwarya. My name is Ishvara Jain. I would like to ask you, how is financial planning as a career? Right, so you know, we were just talking, we've heard Eshwarya's question there. We were just talking about how it's just about opening up. But she seems someone who is, who could perhaps be keen. So what would you say to her? See, ideally what she must do is that in, in before even she goes for a certified financial planning uh, certification, mm -hmm. she must have a basic degree in commerce mm -hmm. or a degree in an MBA. Mm -hmm. An MBA is more suitable because you understand the business dynamics of it better mm -hmm. with a finance specialization. Okay. Once she has that, she understands different products, mm -hmm. different aspects of saving, different investments in savings, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Then once she gets a CFP along in her in her fold, her ability to assess you as an investor mm -hmm. and advise you becomes very good. I see. Instead I see. of... So let an MBA complement... Yes, is an MBA acts as a base right. and CFB then acts as a tool to make you a good advisor. I see, okay. Well, Eshwari, I do hope that helps. I have another question here saying, after doing my certification in financial planning, what is a better option? Joining a financial planning firm or starting your own practice? I would imagine a firm to get some experience. No. What would you say? No. I see, no. that's interesting. Because, uh, you know, when you, when you start a firm, mm. Because I'm interesting my money to you, mm. I would I would expect you to have a certain amount of experience right. with handling money. Right. So unless you have that level of credibility in right. the society in which you operate, right. I may not. It's going that to be to difficult. You. Yes. Right. So right. it's also imperative mm. that you work in a firm, mm. get an experience. You know that will I advise someone who is in his twenties for more stocks? Mm. Will I advise someone who is in his forties for more debentures? I see are questions which you, you do by trial and error. Correct. Spread over 10, 12 years. Right. Once you do that, you will have built up and a then, ocean of contacts. Right. Of clients who will have the faith in you over Correct. 10, five, 10 years. So the trust factor again, because there's that money involved, the trust that factor being being very key. Yes. And you know, perhaps that's, that's an important thing to keep in mind. Get that experience, work with the big names, work with the big guys that are of course so many big guns now in this field. You can take your pick and uh, like Mahesh saying, the sector just of course, just about opening up. So that of course should help. Ananya has the next question. Let's hear from Ananya. I'm currently pursuing my postgraduate diploma in financial planning. Uh, I would like to ask uh, if this is my current correct field because I have uh, issues with interacting with people but I'm quite good with the technical part so uh, is it the right way to go for me or sh should I switch to a CFA? Right so that's that's interesting and I say that she sort of assessed herself very well and very honestly so, you know so it may be people skills not being that good. And it matters a lot. It matters and, a lot, yeah, yes. You know, you're asking me yeah, to give my money to you. Yeah, you're so asking me to trust skills. me. Right, exactly. You know, and, and, so and, what would you say? What, what would you recommend? You know, if, if she has a major people, and it's also it can be acquired. It is not as if you can't acquire right. people's skills. But if she genuinely feels that uh, she doesn't have it in her to interact with people and, and get their trust in her, then she definitely is better off doing a CFA. I see. Because the CFA uh, involves a lot of high-end technical analysis. Okay. Which is essential for doing financial products for any consumer. Okay. So it's one step behind a financial planner. I see. Without a good financial product, a planner has nothing to sell. Right. So if so she has that ability, each, each other. other. So that therefore, that so is there's something. There's no harm in doing a CFA and it's a good certification. Right. Okay. Shubham has the next question. Go ahead, Shubham. How CFP will enhance a career? There is no other way to go about it first and foremost, is there? Yeah, Isn't no, that there is the minimum that yes, you perhaps yes. have to do, whether you take Not your... mandatory right now, but it I will see. become mandatory in the coming days. So right now, what is mandatory, Mahesh? Nothing, honestly. So I can just go out there and say, and I know, I know how to... Plan. Yes. What does a stockbroker do? What does a stockbroker has been doing in this country for ages? Hmm. Uh, he has a skill hmm. and he sells the skills to you. Hmm. So per se, the certification really didn't matter. Hmm until very recently. Right. Now, because of SEBI and Krizil playing a larger role, mm. uh, they are making it mandatory in the coming days. Right. So, the, let's, just, let's quickly recap this. The top three things that you need to keep in mind if this is for you. Of course, first, as always with anything, have genuine interest in all of this. Even though certification not essential at the moment, go for it because yeah. very soon it will be it and will that might just yeah. be a uh, sort of a big stumbling block 
and get training with a well-known financial planning mm -hmm. firm. So the top three things that you need to keep in mind there. Let us know how it goes for you. Thanks very much, Mahesh, for coming in and uh, sharing your time and thoughts with us. Well, on that note, we're slipping into a quick break now. Coming up after that, how to make a financial plan? Well, Abhishek is going to try and crack that one.